a big part of me is saying, even if it's not Virginia, it's time to head back home. Up the East Coast, the North, it's just time. That's how I'm feeling. I want to tell this story. Story, but not story, but just telling you my experience with, in a classy way. I want to do it in a classy way because I'm not upset. I'm not mad. I'm not disgusted. I'm just more informed and more knowledgeable of what the what the freak is happening here in Texas. I'm just noticing some stuff that ain't right. right. Testing one, two, one, two. It's been a long day. You just want to go away. You can't sleep at night. And now I'm here. I can't promise tomorrow. But you're gonna feel out a day. We can tingle it away. Now I'm here. Ooh, I couldn't get my prescription. So I'm gonna get it tomorrow. I'm just gonna take me some Advil. I'm gonna go ahead and they didn't get ready to chill and eat. I'm going to go ahead and edit the eating video. And once I edit that, I'm taking off my clothes, y'all. And, like, I'm literally going to take off this wig. Like, it, let's see. Oh, Lord. I really put this wig on today. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to wait. Give it a few. I'm sweating anyway. I'm tired. I'm taking off this wig. And I'm going to put on some nighties. And hopefully Nadine find us a good movie. And I'm about to chill. And I will see y'all again tomorrow. Oh, it smell. It hurt the smell, y'all. It hurt. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just glad that I got that part done. But I still got so much work to do. But still, see y'all tomorrow, y'all. Bye. So this time, I have the... Girl, she's so cute. And this is a papaya smoothie. Yeah, I'm putting it in the freezer for right now. Give myself a little minute. <sighs> oh, don't worry, I'm coming back for you. I'm being about to open up some fries. They smell so good. Man. Juice she got tonight. Oh my god. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, 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 hello. Hey y'all. I think it's the afternoon, but I'm not sure yet. But I'm finally up out of bed from coming from the dentist yesterday. Tweety say hey. Hi, Tweety. Hey spirit, you feeling better? Yeah, I'm sore, Tweety. My mouth hurt. But I want some comfort, so we're going to have some coffee. Haven't made coffee in a long time, y'all. Mmm, that look good. Got a little bit of almond milk. I got me some salmon in the oven right now. I'm going to eat some salmon. It's still kind of black, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you got to remember, almond milk is not creamer, okay? And creamer is not milk. Just saying. Mmm. <laughs> this looks so good, y'all. It's like I fried the rest of the rice and my salmon. I boiled it. And then I got me some cold pasta from the holiday dinner. And I tell you, mm. I wish I could eat with y'all, but I got to eat slow. But I'm about to enjoy my food and lay back down with Tweety. Hey, spirit lights. Hey, y'all. Uh, roll down the window. I feel like I want some fresh air today. I'm waiting on Nadine. She's not going to be long. It's pretty much in the a.m. It's on its way towards the afternoon. So, good afternoon, y'all. Yeah, I... Oh, my goodness. 
today is the 29th. I did not see y'all in ASMR or vlogging at all yesterday. I kind of just pretty much got me something to eat, but I went back to bed. I got up and then went right back to bed. I got a strawberry almond um, milk this morning. Mm. Mm, it's good too. One of my spare lights was telling me that when I order, well, that was a big butterfly. Oh my God, it was huge. I think that's the biggest one I've seen. Was telling me when I order uh, the venti almond milk, get it without ice. Because if I don't, I get like a grindy. But I told him a little, so it's, it, I don't know. It don't look like it's a, a whole lot. I told her a little. I didn't want no like warm feeling type milk this morning. I finally got the grilled cheese, y'all. They finally had it. I'm happy they had it because I just need something, some comfort food right now. I only can eat on one side of my mouth. Hmm? And probably look like um, I'm still swelling. My whole nose hurt right here. My face hurt right here. And my whole lips still hurt inside and outside. I feel kind of numb. Mm. That was rough. But my dentist told me that it was going to be painful for a few days. But I've been taking it easy with it. Just eating on one side. Taking my time eating. I feel a lot better than I felt when I first had. My mouth worked though. I felt a lot better. The day is very gloomy. The weather reminds me of when I was driving of um, Vegas in the morning. That gloomy look. Like it's trying to rain, but it don't rain. I've been binge watching. Oh my God. What's the name of the show? Good Girls. That's the name of the show. I'm on the last season, y'all. I haven't slept. I haven't been able to sleep anyway at night. Like I should. And last night, I have not slept. I, it's gonna be, if I don't get no sleep, by nine o'clock tonight, it'll be 24 hours I've been woke. I don't even know why I don't feel sleepy or tired. I, it's not like I got like all this crazy great energy i just don't feel tired like my mind is, is popping like my thought process has been on overdrive i've just been thinking about a lot of stuff a lot of stuff that took place for 2021 I told Nadine this morning, I feel like I'm a stranger where I live. 2022, it's going to be 10 years that I've been here in Texas, y'all. And I'm starting to feel like this feeling of it's time to go home. Or this is not home.
I was telling Nadine down, you know, like, everywhere I go, people seem to flock to me. I always seem to have a bunch of, like, associates. I don't want to call them friends. <laughs> and the past, the past, the old me would say I had a bunch of friends. I'm just a bunch of associates. And I'm always doing stuff and going to events and meeting people and stuff like that. Since I've been in Texas, it hasn't been that way for me. It's been different. Because it's like... It's just on people trying to, you know, get on their feet. People looking out for just themselves, their family, which is understandable. But it's not like, uh, it's totally different from Virginia. It just is. Totally different from Virginia. And it's nothing like New, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> I think most people that come here from Jersey... They they literally I I don't spoke to just a couple of people that's been here from North New Jersey. All they're trying to do is get back to New Jersey. And I don't have that feeling because I spent a lot of years raising my kids in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I lived all over Virginia. I lived in Virginia Beach. I lived in Ocean View. I lived in Norfolk. I lived in Portsmouth. Anybody know about like, the Deep Creek part of Portsmouth? That's where I was at. Newport News, Hampton, Yorktown. I ain't living in Yorktown, I hung in Yorktown. Um, lived in Williamsburg, Henrico, Chesterfield. I can go on and on. If I didn't live in a city in Virginia, I had a business in Virginia, in that city. I ain't live in Hampton, but I had a business in Hampton. I ain't live in Yorktown, but I had a business in Yorktown. You know, you know, you get, you see what I'm saying? So I was all over Virginia. So a small part of me is really starting to feel like it's time to head back in the world. Well, a small part of me is saying that it's time to head back maybe to Virginia, but a big part of me is saying, even if it's not Virginia, it's time to head back home. Up the East Coast, the North, it's just time. That's how I'm feeling. Oh, goodness. My cheese toast. My grilled cheese is not so hard. Mm. I'm watching this little plant bug on my window. I'm debating if I should turn this car on and roll up this window because I ain't got time for no bugs. So we're going to talk today, y'all. And today, I'm going to talk about my experience or our experience i really can't talk for nadine and dream but i'm i'm gonna speak on our behalf because we was all together from my perspective and i'll tell you some of the stuff of how they felt too when we went christmas shopping after christmas for the holidays we went to express Look at the camera. I'm hoping that it's focused because my eyesight is not all that great today. When Dream called and said, Mom, I'm going to be up there by 3 o'clock. Be ready. I felt one raindrop, y'all. Hmm? I told Dream 
that. We can go shopping another time, maybe next week or something like that. I was literally laid up in the bed. And he was like, Mom, you don't think you can make it today? And I said, yeah. I mean, if I tell myself that I got to do it, I'm going to get up out of this bed. He said, well, come on, Mom. It still feel like Christmas. Let's go. And he told me he was going to call me back in 10 minutes because he know I like to take another 10 no matter what. And as soon as I got off the phone with him, I started getting myself together. Then Dream called us back He told us to meet him up at the mall. We went to the outlet. When I got to the mall, it, it was packed. And I already knew that it was barely going to be no parking space. I mean, I think that was the packest I seen the mall in a few years. It was so packed. And I was like, wow, it's a lot of people out here today. And as I was driving up, someone had already pulled out. And I got parking in the front of where we was going. I was shocked. And Dream kept on telling me to come where he at. See, he was holding a parking for me. <laughs> Child, I said, no, nah, Dream, I got a good parking. Shoot, you just parking, you just come over where we at. When I go to the outlet mall, I'm going to start this. I'm telling y'all what happened. I don't know, like, lately I've been, like, telling little stories. And somebody says, it's ever going to be story time again. Yeah, um, I got a whole bunch of pages of story time that I need to tell and I have not been because you know I moved by the spirit and I have not been feeling in my spirit to be moved to tell the story yet for whatever reason I have not been pushed in my spirit to do that so when I tell y'all a story I feel it in my spirit like okay yeah I need to tell y'all this story so yeah you still gonna get story time here and there but you know I moved by the spirit yeah I know how that go now when I go to the outlet mall, I'm not leaving that mall without seeing. And it's going to be about people. So if you can't handle me talking about people, 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 I'll see you in another video. Because I'm talking about people today. I normally see white, black, Chinese, Indian, Mexican, African, Haitian. I see all kinds of cultures, different cultures of people you know just because a person look caucasian don't mean they white you know what i mean so you know just different i might not know that all they cultures but this is multicultural to people every time i go to the mall i never just see a whole bunch of black people a whole bunch of african people a whole bunch of caucasian people a whole bunch of spanish people i don't see stuff like that now most of the time if i go to chinatown here in houston I, I already know <laughs> what I'm going to see out there. I, I'm already prepared that I may not see, but maybe uh, one black here, you know, one Mexican here, one white there, you know, maybe maybe a few whites because for some, they love Chinatown. Okay, so back that because it's Chinatown. I can expect that. When we got to the store that we was going to, which is this Express, when I tell y'all, it was packed from the beginning at the doorway, inside the store, down every aisle, every corner. It was packed with people, packed with people. And I'm, I'm just putting it out there. A lot of people do, were not wearing their masks, but I wore mine. Me and my children, we wore our masks. I felt that, yeah, they were saying mask up when I watched the news. So I, I definitely was wearing my mask. That didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all that some people didn't wear their masks. For some, because I'm like this. Look, I, I only can worry about myself. If if I want to put on a mask, I'm put on a mask. If you don't want to wear one, that's on you. Mean you're not going to be going back and forth because you ain't wearing a mask or because I'm wearing a mask. You know what I mean? So, I that really is no big deal to me, but a big deal because of everything that we're going through right now. That people, everybody should have been kind of masked up, but you know, a lot of people wasn't. When we got in the store, I think that me, 
Nadine and Dream, we kind of was moving in slow motion because the store only had one cultural of people, okay? One cultural of people, the whole store. And by us being black, by me being black, by me having a black family, sometimes going into a place, like a lot of times it don't bother us, me and Nadine, we just be going in places and a lot of times we be the only one black in there and it don't bother us. But for some reason, the vibe was not right. <laughs> the vibe wasn't right, y'all. So we kind of just was like walking slow, walking close to each other and we all was kind of looking around and I, I decided to break the ice. I was like, well, I'm going to go this way. And they said, well, I'm going to go with Dream this way. We're going to go over here to the men's section. And I said, okay. I was by myself in the store. If you was to walk in the store, a real busy place, a real busy place, and every single person was Caucasian. And you seen like 20, 25 employees, and you didn't see not one Spanish person, one oriental person or one black per not one black person working and you a different culture when you walk in here you'll kind of be feeling a little um tight like <laughs> for it's like moving kind of like scarce like you move in but you like got your walls up because you notice that you're in a place that there's no multicultural people and everybody's Caucasian you're going to have your guard up, you know. Now, I'm not saying that that has never happened to me, but it's very rare. It's very rare because I live in the freaking United States, okay. And a lot of places that I have been, I have seen multi multicultural of people, not just one type of person, people. But I'm just giving you an example. I'm just setting up that stage for you so you can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. When we walked in, and there was no Caucasian people in this store at all. There were no black people at all. When we walked in here, we was the black family people. The only people in that whole entire store. After us, there was a white woman and her two children Caucasian woman and her two children I'm going to say white and I'm going to say Caucasian because I don't know if everybody is okay with being called Caucasian or if everybody or, or if they just want to be called white so I'm going to just say so you know what I'm talking about and she had her two children strangely when Nadine and Dream left I did start to feel out of place. I start to feel like, okay, well, let me just smile, make sure I keep like a smile on my face because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a friendly person. Somebody speak to me. I'm speaking to them. If, if I feel like the vibe is right, I might be like, hey, how you doing? Oh, that look nice. That's cute. I might say something. So yeah, that's 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 the kind of person I am. I, I everywhere I go, I talk to people, and I'm a people watcher. So you know, I noticed what was what was happening. I just noticed that it was clunks of people sticking together, which are understandable because families shopping for the holiday, families out and stuff like that. But it was literally only one cultural of people in the store. There were, I'm going to just say, I, no Indian at all, no Chinese at all. I'm going to just say that, okay? No African. One cultural of people in the store. And normally, if I if I go to a store and I see more, more like Hispanic or Mexican people when I go into a store, that don't bother me at all. Because I mean, I, I, I don't know, I always felt like if I was going to be relatable to anyone outside of black, that I would always probably be cool with Spanish people or Mexican people. A cultural person because I mean we all of us have been through something within our culture our race so I just never felt like I need to always like have my guard up for any reason I never felt like that 
never felt like I need to have my guard up like that. Now, I am going to say this. A lot of, I have learned a lot, had some really weird experiences that I have never had before here in Houston, which is very strange for me. And so me and Nadine and my son, we, we move a little different. We learn to move a little different because things are different from state to state from where you live at. And like, I'll give you an example. If I was in New York, I feel like everybody in New York, no matter what culture you are, we, we all we all like folks, you know, we like, yeah, well, hey, how you doing? What's up? You know, everybody, you know, but it's not like that everywhere. It's not like that everywhere. Okay, so let's get back to where me, I'm being in the store. I decided to start from the beginning, y'all, of the store because I'm limited because I've been going through a lot, especially since I had the incident with my hand, my body going through healing, my hand trying to heal. And um, I heal differently than most people because of my rapid degenerated bone disease. Things just take slower and I go through chronic pain, very, a lot of chronic pain. So I go through stuff when something happened to me. So I have not been able to really get 100 back on my feet yet. I'm trying though. I really am trying. I'm not 100 on my feet. I am carrying my cane. Um, I would be glad when it gets to the point where I can just hold my cane in my hand and just use it if I need it or stand up on it if I need it. But right now I'm actually using it because I it's taking all my strength to literally get around and a lot of times I use my cane in my left hand. My left hand is uh, very tender and very sore. So I use my right hand or I use my left and right hand trying to make it, trying to take some of the pressure off of my left hand. So I'm in the corner and I got my cane in my left hand and I'm using my right hand to kind of go through these blouses and stuff, right? And I noticed that it was um, a young lady and maybe like two guys. They was like waiting to, to go through the blouses that I was going through. So because I take my time when I'm looking for clothes, I decided to tell her, I, I backed up. I said, you go ahead, you go ahead. And she went ahead and get her. Cause they was kind of acting a little impatient, making the sounds that you make when you tired of waiting on somebody to move. And I had just got there, just started going through there. And I am not a skinny mini. I'm a dickalicious. So you know, I have to go through clothes to make sure that I find my size. And I don't wear a large in blouses. I'm going to just say that. I don't wear extra large and nothing like that in blouse. Now, if I'm looking for pants, that's a different story. But I have to make sure that not only is the blouse going to fit nice, but if it's a blouse that come down, because the way I'm shaped, I'm shaped like, you know, bam, bam. Do you know what I mean? So, if it's a blouse and it's coming, this guy staring at me. She looking at me, staring, talking to the camera. So, he all in my face like, what is she doing? Like, man, do your job. Go to work. <laughs> it's just a camera. So, yeah. So, when you want my body, like, bam, bam. Okay. So, I like shirts that when they're going to... If I'm going to wear them and I want them to cover some parts of the bottom, it has to be probably, like, a medium. But if the large is, like, large, large, it has to be a medium. So, I have... And I can get away with small blouses, too. Depending on how they made and what I'm going to wear them with. Because I got, like, high-waisted pants and everything that I could wear a little short short blouses or whatever so I'm, I saw this blouse that I really liked it going through it I'm going through it and I hear the ah, and they they speak in Spanish they're not saying anything in English but I could hear the irritation of basically tired of me going through blouses so I said you go ahead go ahead go ahead I backed up and they just rushed in and she started looking through the blouses and everything and I stood there and I waited patiently till she was done she didn't see anything she wanted, so she, she left, and they went that way. It was so crowded with people that when I spotted my eye on something, I had to hurry up and just try to go through the blouses and everything, right? So this one worker, this, uh, uh, what do they call the people on the floor? I'm, I'm a, you know what? I'm going to call her the salesperson. Salesperson. I'm going to call her salesperson A, okay? She... 
uh, came up and she had some blouses in her hands. But the blouses that she had in her hand did not look like the blouses that where I was. She had the blouses in her hand. She started, while I'm looking through the blouses, she started going through the blouses too. So I backed up. And I said, let me let her do what she do. She's fixing the hangers on the clothes on the hangers and everything. And I'm like waiting, like, okay. And my mind was saying, that's kind of rude. Like you see me looking for something and you're, if you're not putting something back, you need to wait until I'm done. You know what I mean? I felt like that was kind of rude, but you know, she was just like, like on me, like breathing on me. So I was just like, let me get out of her way and let her do what she do. So then once I, she saw that I was waiting on her, she stopped. And she left. And out of that blouse section, I found me a blouse. I liked it a lot, so I had it in my hand. I went to the next section. Ciao. The girl was back over there in my section where I'm looking through the clothes with the same stuff in her hand. And she started going through the thing, pushing everything, you know, really hard, kind of hard, like pushing it. And I'm like, okay, let me go over here because... She in my, now she in my way. That's how I felt. And they had this rack. You know, they have clothes going uh, in the beginning. Then they have clothes on the round racks in the middle. So I started going to this rack that was in the middle. And it had a bunch of silk, like, uh, floral blouses on it. So I didn't really like the blouses that was on that rack. But I decided that I'm going to go ahead and look through it. Because sometimes you'll end up seeing something that... You didn't even know it was there, you know, once you start looking and you might like it. So I'm looking on a rack. So she comes, she leaves her that area and she comes to the rack and she starts pushing the clothes together real tight and everything. And I'm like, okay. Come on, pretty, let's go. Pretty is my cane. That's what I call her, y'all. Just because y'all didn't remember her name, her name is Pretty. Because she's pink, real pretty. I said, okay, pretty, let's go. So me and Pretty making it down, like towards the end on one section. And it has some really pretty elegant like sweater. And I feel like it was it's too hot for like sweaters like right now in Houston, but I love sweaters. So and and everything was 50% off at Express. Everything. If it said 86, it was 50% off. If it said 40, it was 50% off. So the sweater. I think it was running 65 or 50% off. So I went to go look at the sweater. I got like about two things in my hand. And I'm kind of struggling a little bit because I got stuff on my left arm. I got my cane in my left hand. And I'm trying to move around with my right hand. And I'm like, whoa. There was nowhere to sit. There was no carts. There was no bags or nothing like that around. Every single person had their clothes in their hands. Every single person. No matter what they had in their hand, they, they had it in their hand. So, and there was nowhere to sit your stuff down at. But I'm going to tell you what Spirit did. I moved some jeans that was on the lower table over. <laughs> and I took my clothes and I laid it there on top of the jeans so that I can go look through this rack so I can find my size. Yeah, I went through every single blouse on that freaking rack. Well, actually, sweater. I went through every single sweater on that rack. And they had extra large, large, and extra small. They had no medium. I finally found a medium. One medium. I was so freaking happy, y'all. I was so happy. So I made my way back to the table to get my clothes. And while I'm on the table, putting the hangers in my hand, the girl comes over there. She got no clothes on her hand. And she's working on the table. She's taking the jeans and putting them back on top of each other, straightening them out and everything. And I thought, I was saying to myself, I ain't gonna lie. I said to myself, okay, she's following me around. She's going every step that I go. And that's what she's doing. But... That's her job. I'm not even going to get irritated. Long as, you know, I don't know. I just like, let me go over here. So I had about five uh, things that I picked out by the time they didn't came. 
And I didn't even see Nadine at all until I had like five things. Nadine came and she's like, hey, mom, how's it going? I said, hey, Nadine. I said, it's going good. I said, she said, what you got? I said, this is what I got. I started showing her what I got. And she's like, oh, this is cute. Oh, this is pretty. She said, mom, you sure this one not going to be too, too big? I said, well, they only had a large and I really like that one. So I just got in a large. I'm just going to probably wear it like, um, with some tights and let it just be, hang over my body. And she was like, okay, okay. So while Nadine's over there looking at, looking at my clothes, I see the girl again. I didn't say nothing to Nadine. I, I, I wasn't going to say nothing to Nadine until I got to the car to tell Nadine how this girl was acting. What Dream doing? She said, oh, Dream get on his way to the dressing room. He should be over here soon. And she said, um, you want to look over here at some stuff? There's some stuff over here. So I goes over there with Nadine, and I'm looking at everything, and we see the girl. And she like, excuse me, excuse me, coming past us, like squeezing past us. So we're like, okay. Then she did it again, going the other way. So then Nadine was like, okay, mom, come on this side. Let's let her do what she do, and then we'll look through the blouses. I said, she's going to be a while. <laughs> and Nadine's like, mom, what you mean? I said, every single section that I went to, Every single thing that I looked at, she's been, you know, moving the blouses and checking the prices and, and the tags. And and so Nadine looked around. I looked around and all the other, like, employers, salespeople that was there was up at the register. Or they was, uh, one girl was stocking stuff. She was really stocking stuff, like, on her knees, like, stocking stuff. Nadine looked around. She was like, okay. And it was the store was packed with people. And she said, well, let's look over here. Ain't nobody over here. And we can look through the blouses freely, looking through them without being interrupted. Let's go over here. So we leave and we go to the other, out, uh, other side. And this side had some clearance stuff. I'm excited. I saw some booty shorts too, y'all. I was like, whoa, child, let me look through these shorts. I'm looking through stuff. And all of a sudden, the girl is right there with me between me and Nadine. I'm on one side, Nadine on one side, looking through the stuff. And she right here in the middle, doing like this. And Nadine was like, uh, Mom, I don't see nothing. Let's look over here. So we leave again and go to another section. We decided to leave, like... Where the section where I was at, we completely left it and kind of left into the middle section. Just left her over there so she could just, I don't know, she's acting weird. Child, she came to the middle section where we was at. So I was like, okay. So Nadine kind of looked at her. Well, Nadine, I said, well, before we look at anything else, let me put my came on the floor so I could rest on it like this for a second. I'm tired now. I'm tired. Right? I felt like I was trying to get away from this girl. I said, I'm tired now. So I'm standing there and Nadine's standing there holding my stuff and she's telling me um, that she sees something pretty and we're going to go over there and look and everything. The girl come over there and she's like, um, excuse me, excuse me. And we was like, yes. She said, um, do you need to, you need me to take that and put it up at the front for you? And they didn't look down and was like, no, I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep everything. We, we still looking. Because I was telling Nadine that I, they didn't give me my budget, what I was supposed to spend. So I was going to look. Now you look at everything and decide what you really, really like the most. And that's what you're going to get. And then the rest you put back. That's what we was going to do. So... She's like, oh, okay. She, she left. And we looking through some blouse. I found like a nice, like a, almost like a jacket sweater. It was so pretty. I found it. Looking through it. They didn't go through it because she's trying to find my side. And she comes back. And she's like, um, here go a bag. I can just take everything you got and put it in this bag. And before Nadine could say anything, she was putting stuff in the bag. She was just taking stuff from Nadine and putting it in the bag. And Nadine was like, okay, well, thank you. And Nadine put the bag on her shoulder. So then Nadine was like, well, now that she done took all her stuff and put it in the bag, maybe she'll stop following us around. 
I was like, yeah, she's too, she's she's too much, you know. So I'm gonna get to I don't wanna go no more into me shopping, so I'm gonna just tell you. Saw Dream, Dream went to the dressing room. I'm coming to Dream. Let's go ahead and get in the line. Y'all, the line was right all the way around the corner in the store. And they didn't throw her way out, so let me shorten this real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my lens. My lens, like, is... Uh, I don't know why it looks... Uh, it's giving me that blurry. Okay, so I'm in a Starbucks line. Get ready, get needing something to eat. So I figure I'll tell y'all some more of the story. So just in case my camera died, I'll for I forget to come back with the rest of it. Okay, so y'all, the line was wrapped all the way around the corner and Nadine started calling Dream to see exactly where was he at with trying on his clothes to let him know that we're in a long line and that he could just come on up into the line once he come out of the dressing room and let him know our location of the line. So the whole time we up there, they had a whole bunch of uh, cashiers up there. If, if I was to count, I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six or seven cashiers up at the line. And then you could see other people working the floor in the back, whatever they was, you know, st st stacking, putting up clothes and stuff like that. It might have been like eight cashiers. It was like a whole line of them. And as we was in line, we noticed that the line was kind of moving kind of fast. And each person would say, next person next, next person next. And they would speak to them, greet them, and stuff like that. So we're thinking, yeah, this is going to go pretty fast. So Dream took a minute. But when we got to the part where, you know, you start to like be closed into the railings or whatever, because you get ready to get close to the register, Dream showed up. And he jumped in line with us. So, y'all, okay. Let me put my mask on, y'all. I'll be back because I'll be up to the window and like so embarrassed. I really am. I was just telling Nadine. Because I asked Nadine. I said, Nadine, what you getting? She said, um, I would like a grilled cheese. Because, you know, I tore my grilled cheese up, y'all. That grilled cheese was good, right? So, I'm like, oh, God. Because usually Nadine order something different from me. She'll say something like a, a, a loaf or either a cheese danish or something like that. And I'm like, okay. I'm going to just play it off. <laughs> I asked for the grilled cheese, y'all. I get something here. And, and the young lady said, I said, I hope this lady do not think I'm being greedy. I'm telling you. I hope not. I hope she don't think, like, I'm all the pieces that I got me a grilled cheese. And I, I had to come back for a second when I tore that grilled cheese up, right? <laughs> and when I went to go pay for it, she went to go hand me my food. She was like, oh, you were just here. And I was like, oh, my God, don't think I'm greedy. I'm not here for myself this time. She laughed. She said, that's so funny. <laughs> When you end up back at the Starbucks line and they remember you, and you just was there. Oh my God, that is so embarrassing. Okay, y'all, I'm headed to Walgreens and I'll tell y'all the rest of the story. Okay? So, Nadine's not going to be gone long. She's just going to go pick up some um, bath soap. Okay, so, when Dream finally came and got in the line, he got in front of me. And I was behind Dream, and Nadine was in the front. Because, of course, Nadine's the one who's going to be paying for our stuff, because that's our Christmas gift from Nadine, was to take a shopping at Express, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm looking strange at the, the camera, but I feel like everything is blurry, and it may not be. So I apologize if I am keep looking strange at, like, why would Nadine, why Spear looking at us like that, you know? Just trying to make sure that the camera is focused. Dream said he needed a belt. So I said, okay, Dream, give me your clothes and you go run and get you a belt. Nadine said, no, mom, I got your stuff in the bag. I'll take Dream stuff. So she got all Dream stuff on one hand. She got my stuff in the bag. And Dream go looking for a belt. And I uh, looked for some earrings. I found two pair of earrings. I seen a lot of earrings, but child, they was talking about $30 a pair of earrings with 50% off. Even with 50% off, that was just too much for your girl's spirit. So I got like two pair of earrings that I saw that I liked it. 
And as I was looking at the earrings, the young lady who was basically following us around in the store was at the earrings. And she now she's straightening them, fixing them and everything. And I'm like, well, I'm done. So I'm going to get out of her way. So I text the earrings and get back in line with Nadine. Then Dream comes and he said he didn't see a belt. So I, all the cashiers are moving fast. So I'm like, wow, Dream, this line is moving fast, right? Now, let me tell y'all. <laughs> let me stop right here before I tell y'all the end. When we was in the long, long line, before Dream got in line, I told you the whole store was one culture. So two black girls came in the store. And for some reason, I felt a sigh of like, yeah, okay, okay. I felt good about that, seeing two black girls coming in the store. When the black girl came in, she had braids on her hair. She had a drink in her hand. She stopped, y'all. She stopped soon. She got past, like, the doors and the bars. And she got in the middle of the floor. She stopped. She looked around like this. And then the other black girl was just standing there looking straight ahead. The black girl with the braids said something to her, and she was like, and they shrugged her shoulder and they was like, mm-mm. And they left the store. And I was like, dang. And I started feeling like that's probably what we should have did. We probably shouldn't have had shop there. But I was, you know, feeling like, no, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That's how I was thinking when I first got there. As we got closer to the line, now I'm back where I was. I just wanted to tell y'all that key part because that's very important for me now. Maybe not be important for you, but it's important for me that I noticed that. And Nadine noticed that too. So when the cash people were calling each person to, I can help the next person, I can help the next person. We noticed that when we got to become the next person, y'all, the girl on the floor, who was following me around every single place I went. She went past all the cashiers. and she was like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. She walked and I didn't know she was about to open up. She stood right there and right where, uh, it was like we was like literally looking directly at her and she opened up the register and she was like, Instead of seeing the next person next, she's like, um, I can help you over there. You can come here. You can come here. And Nadine was like, oh, okay, you know. And me and Nadine looking at each other. And Dream looking at us because he know when, like, the vibe ain't right, you know. So Dream tells the young lady to, this is his stuff, to make sure she put the stuff in separate bags. And that he already have his stuff pretty much like folded up how, how they would fold up your stuff and put it in a bag. She just kind of grabbed his stuff. Now everybody else was getting greet. How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? The girl didn't speak to us at all. She just told us that we can come to her. And she didn't say how y'all doing? How was y'all shopping experience or nothing? Y'all, she didn't even smile. She just seemed angry, right? She was taking my stuff off the hanger and was like, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. And I'm like, so Nadine was like, could you fold that up neater, please? So then she took my clothes and started folding it up neater. She wasn't even trying to fold it up neat like everybody else was folding people's clothes up, right? And then she took dream clothes and she just folded his clothes as the wrong way. She didn't follow the crease or anything. She just kind of like rolled it up like, and we just kind of looking like, what the F is the freak is this girl problem? She was in the bag immediately. She started digging in the bag that she gave us. And she's pulling everything out, pulling everything out. She was looking through the bag, making sure everything was out and everything. She didn't like ring up one thing at a time in the bag. She was just going through the bag like she was looking for something, right? And we just looking, we standing there. So she rings Nadine up. And it was so crazy. She was ringing us up so slow. But I'm, I am going to say this. Everybody in their lines only had one or two things literally one or two things as a matter of fact the white lady that was behind us in the line called one of her children to stand in line for her and then she got out of the line and out of nowhere she walks out the store and we looking like and y'all they didn't they didn't um bat no eye they didn't look her way or nothing but the whole time 
the girl was right there if she was not close to us in the line she was right there at the line with us matter of fact when you turn the corner they got socks we turns the corner waiting on our turn to get in line she's at the socks messing with stuff i was like this is, this is just too much she was being too much and like obvious and i felt like other people could see how we was being treated and, and, and sometimes i feel like sometimes people like to kind of show off or show other cultures how they treat black people like they want people to see it you know and and i think that i'm getting so numb like i don't want to get continue being numb to this anymore i do not want to be numb to the way that we're treated when we go inside of a store or when we're in a store i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna tell you another short short story right after this if, if, if nadine don't come out the store in time but people tend to have to, to do this to us a lot if there's certain cultural people in the store and then there's white people outright like in front of our face do something to make the other culture feel like they're more important and we can feel being thrown to the back seat or neglected we can feel it you know when she she wasn't speaking she wasn't saying that she just seemed very very angry and dream said he wanted a separate bag she tried to put his stuff in my bag and i already had a lot of clothes so i don't even know why she was trying to put his stuff in my bag and she was like no 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 i don't want that and she's like okay okay fine she put it, his stuff in another bag but then she started trying to take some of my clothes out my bag and start trying to put them in dream bag. And I was like, no, no, no. We want them to stay separate. Uh, yes. Thank you. All right. I told that we wanted to stay. We wanted them to stay separate. Here come Nadine. So yeah, she finally rings up our stuff and everything y'all. Everybody was leaving out the store because they only had one or two things. We spent the most money in the store. We didn't get a thank you, have a good holiday, have, enjoy the rest of your holiday, or anything like that. I'll finish with y'all in a minute. <sighs> okay, y'all, I'm going to finish telling y'all the end to the story because I'm, I'm pretty much pretty much at the end. But I got distracted because uh, it's a whole entire family. Go past this um, right child, when I tell you the whole entire family from newborn to little kid. The whole entire family right. out there at the corner at a kind of like in a dangerous spot so i hope they'd be okay i'm going to, to the atm to go get uh, some you money for the them for your destination child they be right. speeding in the parking lot i hope they got an atm here i might have to make a whole u-turn to get over there where they at but i'm definitely going to get them enough where if they want to walk Get, go ahead and get off the corner for the day they could. Usually I see maybe one person out there with a sign or something like that. Sometimes two working together. But when you see the whole family, including kids, I mean, in a stroller, toddlers, teenager, young one, the whole entire family is just out there, homeless. Out there. It look like they've been out there all day too. So I'll talk to y'all in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back on track, y'all, on my way back home. Oh, look at that plane like it's going straight up. The, the nose is all the way up in the air. But, yeah, child, I, at first I thought I counted six kids. She, There was a lady out there with eight kids. Eight kids on this one tiny corner. And we're, like, on a main huge highway, like, lights since one, two, three, four, like, lights on each corner and... U-turns uh, highway, not like a regular street you can walk on the sidewalk. So uh, I pray that God continue blessing them, that they be safe out there, and that what I was hoping is that I gave enough for them to say, okay, we out of here. We can go get something to eat. If they have to get them a place to stay for the night or whatever, or just feel like they good now, I gave them enough. So... I hope that they do that because it's it's so dangerous seeing them on the street. Now see, I see two people here. Um, they they working together, man and woman, and that's how I usually see it. But I never see like a the actual black mom out here with all her kids on one freaking corner. She got everything like look like they got everything they own with them on the freaking in, in the middle of the intersection. Like it's not a corner. It's like the intersection of the highway. 
that's crazy but i hope they be okay but yeah let me finish telling y'all the end and then i'm gonna go ahead and head home i don't like to see stuff like that because y'all know that i dealt with being homeless but i i worked every day hard to find a way to not be homeless and it's definitely it's such a bad feeling when you got kids and I, I definitely was homeless with kids and I don't I don't like to see people out here like that I wish I could do a whole lot more for them so when we was in the store we got to the end of the line the lady put everything in the bag and everything y'all she didn't even say okay have a happy new year have a merry Christmas no, no buy, no nothing, y'all. Nothing. Just hand us out bag. And then she immediately closed up her register. And she leaves. And I could feel me and Nadine and Dream just kind of like. So she follows me around the store the whole time. And then when it was time for me to get my stuff rung up, she runs her tail to the front. Open up a register to only ring us up. To only ring us up. I guess to make sure that everything that she saw me pick up, that I still had it or had it in the bag or whatever. That's what I, that's what I feel like she did. And when we left the store, me and Dean and Dream was just talking. We didn't like the vibe. I didn't like the vibe at all. And I, I feel like the vibe probably wouldn't have been that tense if they had at least uh, one black worker at least one with all those people in the store not one black person working or and we the only black family in the store and then they didn't have no white person working it was only one white family in the, on the store and the lady she walked out the store and they didn't run behind her but they didn't walk her walk around the store around her at all so you could feel the vibe and i felt like okay they must don't want my money. They don't want my money. And I said, well, we all decided that we were going to go. We, we're not going to shop at that express anymore. But we're going to find a different express. That was my first time seeing an express that only had one culture of people and act that way like that in the store. That was my first time experiencing that. And I didn't like that at all. But a lot of times when I go to Express, they have different cultural people working. And you don't feel that weird vibe. Like, they don't want you there. And I'm going to tell you, the vibe felt like, we don't want your money. We don't want you in the store. Why are you among us? That's what it felt like. So, I'm, I'm in the United States. 2021. No company should be no big company should be running and only have one cultural of people working period none so after that we i didn't let that mess up my like my my day or nothing but we just decided that okay you know we need to be more aware and intentional pay attention when we walk into a store if the vibe not right yeah go give your money to somebody who want it because it's crazy how we spent the most money and we didn't even get greeted from the time we came to the store or greeted when we got up to the register or how was y'all shopping experience? Was, did you find everything okay? None of that. None of that. All they was worried about if we were Bonnie and Clyde. That's what it felt like. So I'm done. I'm definitely done with that express and I'm definitely gonna, I got a couple of other expresses that I like and I never experienced that. But, and it's not just about Express. Anytime I walk into a big store and I only see one culture of people and I don't see no black people working at all and it just seemed like, uh, and, and, and everything stopped when I walk in here or the vibe ain't right, I'm not.